Let's take a look at this new keyboard I just got. It's called the Tukan by Beekeep. How do we build the custom firmware? There's a lot of different ways that you can build the firmware. If you're a normie, there is GUI tools that you can use. I flashed my Glove 80 using a GUI for a long time and I hate it. It's not efficient for me. So personally, I'd rather do everything in a text file and inside NeoVim. I'm gonna show you how I do it later on, but you don't have to do it the way that I specifically do it. Now, you don't even need to buy batteries or install batteries if you're gonna use it with a cable all the time. The way that I used the keyboard at first was with this cable. As you can see, it's connects to the computer on this side and it's split here and it has two ends, okay? So you can connect both halves with the same cable. I'm not sure if Beekeep sells this cable. I purchased it when I got the Glove 80 and this is the way that I use the Glove 80. So this is the cable that I'm going to be using for both charging both halves and in case that I need to use the keyboard connected to the computer because it works with that cable. I was also able to flash the firmware on both halves of that toucan with that cable. It worked fine. Now, if you're going to build the firmware yourself from GitHub, here is the repo. I'm going to leave the link in the video description. The first thing that you need to do is to fork it. So I'm just going to click here. Just going to leave the defaults here and I'm going to click on create fork. It's creating the fork right now. Now that the fork is created, you can see that I'm on this other account that I have and it has been forked. You need to come here to the actions tab and you need to enable this. I understand my workflow. So just go and click this part here. The workflows have been enabled. No workflows have been ran yet. This GitHub action is what is going to build the firmware. So you'll be able to download it. So you need to enable this 100%. What you need to do afterwards is to clone your fork. Okay, so I'm just going to come here to the main repo. It's going to come here and I'm just going to clone it. I don't think that I have SSH configured. Yeah, I don't have it configured on this account, but I assume that you already know how to clone repo. So just clone it. If you're a new Vim user, I'm using this plugin QMK.nVim that allows me to configure both of the keyboards, the Glove 80 and also the Toucan. Notice that I commented out the configuration from the Glove 80 here, and I'm gonna show you where that is set up now. If I bring up this auto commands file, you'll be able to see here that I have this at the bottom of the file, okay? So this is for the Toucan keyboard. You can see it here. I specified the layout of the keyboard here, and we can also see here the auto command for the Glove 80. Here is its layout as well. Here we can see all of it. It's what starts here at line 283 to the bottom of my auto commands file. Now, let me open this glove80.keymap file. You can see the path of this file right here at the top, and you'll be able to see that QMK auto formats this file for me. Look at this keyboard layout that is generated by the plugin, these comments, and whenever you make a change here, it will auto format the file for you. Now, let me show you the file for the Toucan keyboard. I'm just going to switch here to my home session and I'm just going to switch here to the Toucan repo. Let's open this in NeoVim and let's restore the session. And this is the Toucan.keymap file. Same thing. So as you're able to tell, this plugin allows me to configure both of the keyboards without an issue. I'm going to leave a link to the Tukan.Kima file in the video description. And I'm also going to leave a link to my dots in case that you want to see the config for the QMK.NVim plugin. But if you want to learn more about this QMK.NVim plugin, go and check this video out. I explain everything in detail there. It's this one right here. You know that I'm a macOS user, so 
the Y scrolling is always inverted. How can you do that? I did it in this toucan.dtsi file. It's also going to be in the video description. So if you scroll down here to the scroller, I think it is, you'll be able to find this line right here. Input transform Y invert. So just add that, that is going to invert Y scrolling. I also commented this one so that it matches my MacBook scrolling as well on the X axis. How can you write and middle click? Um, this is the way that I did it. If you go to my toolcan.keymap configuration file, go to the bottom and you'll be able to see that I added this pointing that H. Okay, okay, just make sure that you add that heading. Jump back here. And in my navigation layer, you're going to see that I have these lines here. Right click and middle click. Notice that this is a mouse key press, right? So when I'm inside this navigation layer, I can right click and I can also middle click. If someone in the audience is expert with trackpads and ZMK devices, if you can let me know if I can right click with two fingers the way that I do it in the Mac, just let me know because it would be awesome. So far, I don't know if it's possible, but if you know, just share it in a comment down below. Now, how do you flash the firmware? Let's say that you already made all the changes that you want. I'm just going to add a comment here, test comment, and I'm going to push the changes so you can see how the firmware is built. I'm going to bring up LazyGit here in U of M and I'm just going to stage this file, create a commit, and I'm just going to add a message here for the commit summary, added a test comment. I'm going to hit enter here. I'm also going to push the changes with uppercase P. Notice that the changes have been pushed. I'm going to quit here. LazyGit from U of M. I have a key map that brings up the GitHub repo that this file lives in. So I'm just going to press that right now. Notice that it takes me here. I'm going to go to the main page here for the repo. We can see the orange thing here. It's pending. So we just have to wait for a little bit until it turns green. Okay, so notice that this turned green. It says success now. You just click on it. You can go here to details, doesn't matter. You're going to see all of the different commits. This is the last one. Added a test comment. So if I go to summary here and then I scroll to the bottom of this page, you'll be able to see the download button. Just going to click on this here. Notice that it's just going to download this file. Just going to go in Finder. I extracted this file and I opened it and I see these three files inside. The instructions on the website are not very clear here. So what I did is that I grabbed this file and I added it to the left side and I grabbed this other file and I added it to the right half. I'm not exactly sure if that's the right way. If someone from Beekeep or if someone knows if this is the right way, let me know. But this is what I did and it worked for me just fine. The firmware was flashed correctly. How do you flash the firmware? First, you connect the left half with the cable. Okay, you attach the cable to this right here. You turn it off. I think you need to turn it off. Not exactly sure. Then um, once it's attached, do you see this little pin here? I don't think you can see it, but there's a little button here below the connector. Okay, so once it is connected, you just double press this button here. You're going to hear the noise. And once that happens, you will be able to see the left half here on your MacBook. I saw it here on the left hand side. The only thing that you need to do is grab this file, drag it there, and you're probably going to see an error. It's fine. You don't have to worry about it. Even if you see the error, the file is going to be flashed. Then you do the same thing with the right half. Okay. You connect the right half. You press the button twice at the bottom next to the connector. It is going to show up here in Finder. You drag this other file and that's it. So if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, you can also consider becoming a member. You don't have to. Just like the video, leave a comment down below. 
Remember that all of the different podcast episodes with guests are available in all the different audio platforms like Spotify and all of those. I hope you learned something out of this video. Hope it was useful. I'll see you in the next one.